Welcome again to the Sabbath School lesson for um, June 25th. It's the last Sabbath lesson of this half year. Where has the year gone? Well, we're here again to close out also the book of Daniel. We're going to read some interesting quotes from Daniel and the Spirit of Prophecy, especially of the importance of studying Daniel. Uh, before we go into the lesson, however, let's have a moment of silent prayer, if you will, please. Amen. Well, we're going to have a quick review for Lesson 25. Uh, I found that lesson fairly interesting, uh, although there were some questions raised, especially uh, by the last note. But uh, we'll mention that in a moment. We see that in Daniel chapter 10, the most amazing uh, separating of the curtain, you might say, of looking at the um, the hidden scenes uh, behind the political world uh, that we have in all of Scripture. We have there Gabriel um, working to bring about the promise that was revealed in Jeremiah of the people of God returning back to uh, Jerusalem. I just wonder how that all transpired in the end because we know that the Jews at that time revealed to Cyrus that he was prophesied that he would take the people or give the people permission to return back to Jerusalem. I wonder if those scenes of that history transpired during that time where he was, um, Daniel was praying and Gabriel was using all his um, arts to bring about the prophesied fulfillment of that 70 year prophecy. And of course we know that Michael showed up uh, the prince of princes, as he's talked about in Daniel chapter 12, to assist Gabriel. And we see there that the decree was issued and the people did go back. And then we see that there was many difficulties. And the final note I'd like to point out from Testimonies Volume 5 is where the people have returned to Jerusalem. And there we see Zechariah. Uh, point out that Joshua the high priest is standing before the Lord and um, God sends a message through his prophets to encourage the people to go forward despite the fact that, you know, clothed of ourselves in our own righteousness, which is filthy garments, yet God will say, if we'll be faithful, if we'll be true, I'll give you a place to walk with those that stand by, the angels. In other words, the angels will help them, will work with them, in the work that they have to do. And that is a picture for us today that if we will be faithful, as uh, Joshua, the high priest, was commissioned to do, God would send his angels to work with them and to help in that work which they had to do. What was the work they had to do? To build Jerusalem, to restore Jerusalem. What is the work which we have to do? To build Jerusalem, the spiritual Jerusalem. And that means not just laying... Um, cold bricks upon the wall, but to uh, bring living bricks, living blocks, living stones, as Peter puts it, into the house of God, into the temple of God, and to prepare a dwelling for actually the Holy Spirit in the last days. So we can apply this uh, invisible war now to the battle which we have to fight. They had a literal battle we have a spiritual battle. And now, with that thought, we come to the chapter that is most controversial in the book of Daniel, perhaps one of the most controversial chapters in all of the Bible, chapter 11. And we point out here at this point that we have a literal, which is the past. The past is the literal symbol for the future um, spiritual battle. So if we can apply this principle of literal and symbolic now to chapter 11, we can come to some very uh, interesting and concrete understanding of what is being mentioned in our last lesson, which centers in the last um, uh, 15 or so verses of Daniel 11. Now, we're not going to go into all the history of reading about uh, all the things that happened in the first part of chapter 11. Those are not so controversial. Uh, we're going to look at the lesson we have from 
the last part of Daniel chapter 11 and what all that is pointing to. And we're not going to spend a great deal of time, because we don't have it, to try to explain all the little nitty-gritty personal things and the history that led up to this point. We're coming to the focus of what is happening in the last days. So it tells us in chapter 12, verse 1, at that time shall Michael stand up. Now what time are we talking about here to start the lesson? Because we're going to start at the end and then we're going to work backwards up to that point. Because this is the point that is the focus of Daniel 11 leading up to. What is that point? We're starting at the end. Uh, Sister Corolla, would you like to try to help us with that answer? Well, um, at that time, that's the first verse of chapter 12, so then right. it must be what happened at the end of chapter 11. Mm -hmm. And there we see a time of trouble and tribulation and other critical events happening in the world. And at that time, Michael shall stand up. Okay, let's even get a little more specific. Um, Brother Hunger, what can you say about this? That's a very good answer, Sister Corolla, but we're going to go a little more closer to the point. Okay, in the end of our lesson, we are reaching the time uh, of the end of the time of grace. The time of grace is ended. Yes, and when will be uh, the time of the, uh, uh, we have the expression, is the anguish of, uh, of Jacob, the mm -hmm. time of the persecution, and also will be there is mentioned in chapter 12, the partial resurrection, mm -hmm. is the last event in the last fight, when as the introduction of the lesson bring, mm -hmm. is the time where the people will be liberated, is the time where the Deliver, end, yeah. the, deliberation of, the liberation of the people, is the time when the fight will come to an end, and this mm. is the, the joyful joy that bring our lesson, uh, the end of this lesson, that after mm -hmm. a lot of difficulties that are going, that was in the history, that are going still to be to the people of the Lord in these last days, there will be a, a liberation. And who will stand in these last days? Again, it's Miguel. It's Jesus mm -hmm. standing for his people. Well, I'd like to point out, too, that when um, Jesus stood up, when, he, when Stephen was stoned, there was a dispensation, you could say, that was ended. It was the time of the Jews had been finished. And uh, Luke also mentions that Jerusalem shall be trodden underfoot until the times of the Gentiles shall be finished. So we're talking now when Michael shall stand up, just as he stood up when it was the time for the um, 70 weeks to be finished. Remember, it's going to, uh, unto, um, it says 70 weeks are determined, mm -hmm. right? That means cut off. So that cut off point was when Jesus stood up, when um, Stephen was stoned. Now he's going to stand up again. And this will be the time when the world rejects as in mass the message that God has given. So the Jews as a nation rejected that message. And they had committed actually the sin against the Holy Spirit. And now at the end of time, the same thing is going to happen when it's all over, when it is finished, when he that is just shall remain just, he that is unjust, the same, then Michael shall stand up. And so this point here, we start with our lesson. The final point is the close of mercy, mm -hmm. the end of probation. Mm -hmm. So now, we see, now that we see the end of the lesson, we back up and say, what is the fate of many faithful people of God during the 1260 year period of papal persecution? What did the Lord in mercy send his children? So now we're going to go to the book of Daniel, and verses 33 and 34 brings about something about this long papal period. What can you say about this, Mr. Corolla? This period was a period of persecution for the faithful ones, and um, they tried to still share the message of God with their fellow men. They preserved the word of God mm -hmm. and tried to share it even though it was very dangerous, and they paid a high price for that. They, many of them became martyrs. Mm -hmm. So we start now going backwards and seeing this period that leads up to our time. And of course, seven times this period is mentioned. We have five of them in our note of the text that are mentioning this uh, long period. So 
we see then that the persecution came, and what did Jesus say concerning this time of persecution? How did Satan seek to destroy the work of reformation? Question two, Brother Pablo. Okay, Jesus mentioned that will come a great tribulation, uh, and thus in this, uh, as also mentioned there in Daniel 11, on, on in Act, um, that uh, in this time of tribulation there will come a help. Uh, but I'd like to mention that this is also like a parallel of the last day's events. Why? Because the first question was mentioned the 12, 1260 days, the time of the persecution of the mm -hmm. Roman papacy, how starting with the, the Waldenses, maybe, maybe with the persecution, that so many were killed, and afterward with the movement of the Hussitan, uh, Hieronymus II, and afterward also the Reformation, is how many people were killed, were persecuted, but also the Lord in his mercy sent uh, uh, the help. But also, not only the persecution, but this also here is bringing the second question, that in this tribulation, there was used different kind of tribulation, not only the openly open uh, persecution to the children of God, but also they were introduced those that apparently believe on the Reformation and apparently have received a revelation from the Lord, mm, yeah, but they true. were mentioning a different doctrines and principles uh, than the Reformation itself. And what mm -hmm. wrote this? Confusion in the people. And the papacy was very happy because was destroying the word, the work of lifting up uh, the scripture, the work of lifting yeah. up the, the, the true way of justice that was the purpose I like very much as is mentioned here in the first question in the sorry that I call a little back but the long period of Papa persecution against those who were struggling to maintain the truth and instruct their fellow men in the way of righteousness I like very much this, they were suffering because of the cause of the truth, they were suffering because they want to bring the scripture mm -hmm. forward Mm -hmm. and, and today we are having time of peace today we are not mm -hmm. reach this point that our lesson is going to bring us we need to prepare ourselves we need yeah. to use well this opportunity to share the light to share this message that we have in this prophecy that we may prepare ourselves for this time that are going to come yeah the little help do you have any comment on that Mrs. this girl well the little help is actually the reformation Okay, I would go even further. I would say the printing press was a, was a, was a part of that too, right? Because mm -hmm. God sent a little help. We have Huss and Jerome, and then we have Wycliffe, and we have the, the printing press, mm -hmm. and uh, the opening now of science also was a help because um, the people of God had come to the point where they said, there are absolute standards, we have an authority, and that's the word of God, but science was also coming to the point where they realized there were absolute laws in science. Mm -hmm. And so... This came together at this time during the Renaissance, during the, uh, uh, the Reformation time, and brought about a different thinking among the people. The earth wasn't the center of the universe anymore. We had a, um, uh, now we have a heliocentric view where the sun was the center. So people's minds began to change. The earth was round now, it wasn't flat. And so we have science, we have politics, we have... Uh, literature, and we have religion. It came to a point of understanding things in a different way, and this was a great help, and also we have other things, other factors. Yeah, I'd like to go back to the thought of Jesus that we found there in Matthew. And except those days shall be short, and there should no flesh be saved, but for the elect six, those days shall be short. And this is important because through all those help that came, mm -hmm. it was allowed that the light to shine up in the middle of the darkness. In those days, the papacy was pulling, uh, having the control on religious, but mm -hmm. also in the political way, was just uh, not allowing the people to read the scripture, uh, putting a lot of tradition, a lot of doctrine, false doctrine mm -hmm. on the people. The people were sacrificing, were giving all their money just to have a little peace, totally wrong, totally in, dark, in the mm -hmm. darkness. That's why it's also called the time of darkness. Mm -hmm. uh, this time, dark ages. and in right. dark ages, and in that time, came the Lord intervene also through different ways, as we just mentioned, uh, to give this little help or to save mm -hmm. 
the elected ones that were struggling under strong fights, as um, we mentioned before, many of them killed in different well, ways. So know? there was this time was cut short, and if we look at the history, we can see that particularly one event really was striking in the cutting of that short, and that was the destruction of the Spanish Armada in 18, uh, 1588. Um, this turned the tide against the um, powers that were going to crush England uh, and bring it back into the papal fold. But it's interesting also that just recently, the Pope went and spoke at Westminster Abbey, which was the center of Protestant uh, resistance to the papacy, and people are now saying that England has been converted at last. Mm -hmm. So we live in a very interesting time. And pointing out to what you were saying about the two, two periods, um, uh, Paul actually said that this time of the end, but also God would do a quick work, a short work. You know, and somebody asked me, well, Sister White said it would be a short time. Well, Paul is the one who said that, not just Ellen White. So we're going to live in a time when also there's going to be a very quick work done, and it's going to be, I believe, exponential compared to what it was during the Dark Ages. So we have something we can learn from this period that God is also in these last days going to do a short work. And we expect that there will be persecution. So did the persecution finally end? We see in Daniel 11.35 that some of them of understanding shall fall to try and to purge and to make them white, even to the time of the end. Now, we have another phrase here, time of the end, and the end of time. So when did the time of the end come? Uh, Sister Carola, can you explain this phrase, the time of the end? Well, um, it has to do with uh, 1260 days. Correct. And the 1260 days ended in 1798, when the Pope was taken captive. And in this way, the power of the Catholic Church was broken in such a way that it, it really never recovered to the power it had before. Mm -hmm. And that is the beginning of the time of the end. Right. So the time of the end actually began in 1798, according to Daniel. So we're reading now uh, this portion of scripture and, and trying to find how we can rightly interpret it. Now we come to something that is of importance. What was going on at the time of the end? What was actually happening? What was related to this in the political scene? We're going to go on to question four, unless you have some more comments. Yes, uh, before that, it is true <coughs> that the, we are going to see now in the question four more information uh, related with this, but uh, through the help of the Reformation, or through the help of the uh, German states that stood for the Reformation or supported Luther, it was also a kind of help, and also helped that the persecution was somehow uh, stopped because many people then flew to Germany on the protection mm -hmm. under the, the, the kings of Germany. Uh, but it's interesting as oh, what our lessons this the comment there say the Romanist uh, sorry through restraint the spirit of persecution was not destroyed it broke down when whenever there was opportunity and this is uh, something that not only finished there we see that happening always mm -hmm. and always because behind all this is Satan <coughs> it is true that the political power uh, was uh, that uh, the religious and political the papacy was stopped it in uh, 1798, but also during this time of the help of the German states, uh, they was trying as much as they could still to continue the persecution, but also after that, uh, it was strong reduced, but we see how the enemy tried to bring persecution in different places, and again tried to stop the work of the scripture going forward. In different ways, not only the persecution of the papacy, but in our modern times, through Satan is moving also other religions and stopping the development in, in countries in Asia, in Africa, that are totally in darkness, and will continue to be using this in the future. This history is repeated and repeated and repeated again. Well, I don't know if you realize, but today, even in our time, 
there are thousands of people by, dying mm -hmm. because they're Christian. Mm -hmm. They may not be, you know, all in the same church, but there are around the world today um, myriads of people giving their lives mm -hmm. because they're Christian. So we have persecution today. We have even slavery today. And many of the things that existed back there, they're covered up, they're subtle, but it's going to break out even more and more, especially if we have an economic crisis, you know, uh, that people are uh, believing was going to come. Uh, but that's another subject. But we're, we're going to face, according to Daniel chapter 12, one, a time such as never was. And we need to be ready for that time. Mm -hmm. So the persecution actually did end for a, a great time. And that opened the door for missionary work around the world. But before that actually happened, we have question four. France's role in the crimes, it says, for what did France earn for its crimes in the service of the papacy, who took military power for himself in the middle of this confusion? Um, we read about this in uh, political and, and prophetic terms in Daniel 11. So, Corolla, would you kind of give us a brief outline of this? Because we need to move on through our lesson. Okay. <coughs> um, France had some polit political uh, difficulties uh, mm -hmm. just at this time, <coughs> when the time of the end started. And now they became atheist. Yeah, they declared that basically that God was dead, right? Mm -hmm. <coughs> and that brought about great calamities mm -hmm. in France. And this, in turn, prepared the way for people <coughs> again to become more religious. Yeah, this pendulum swung the other way. But we have to say that the fall of Jerusalem was a picture for us of also the fall of France. fall of France is a kind of a... Uh, you might say, a uh, snapshot of what is going to happen at the end of time. So it's a lesson that we need not forget. We should not forget of what happened in France. Yeah, interesting, because <laughs> here, in the first part, the papacy uh, got the power, uh, political power through the help also from France, mm -hmm. through the military uh, help of France. But we see here in our lesson also that the end of the papacy was also through the change of ideology from the France. That mm -hmm. then is uh, the, the second question, who took the military power in his hand? Then we see that the atheism also took control uh, of France, and uh, then also were the one responsible to, to uh, stop the, this, the papacy uh, uh, power when they took the Pope and, uh, and finished and this... Uh, uh, 1260 years in 1798. But also, those crimes that the France uh, did in the time of, of uh, uh, <coughs> from one side, in the time of, of helping the papacy when it came to the atheists was going in the other direction, was uh, in the opposition with those that uh, were the uh, distributing Bible, killing them also. It was terrible how the guillotine was killing so many people. Uh, but after what was also when came the French Revolution, uh, in the same house of Voltaire was a Bible Society organization mm -hmm. that helped also the distribution Very of the Bible. Very interesting, yeah. yeah. So we have, uh, as uh, Sister Crow was mentioning, we actually have um, a, an opposite reaction. There was a great um, in France, a great uh, war against anything that spoke of religion and seven days a week. They tried a ten-day week and they worshipped the goddess of reason and the god is dead and so forth. So there was a, you might say, uh, a reaction in kind and we follow that, the greatest religious revival since the time of Christ. But let's point out a couple of things here as we move on in our lesson because we're going to come to the king of the north and the king of the south, which is some of the most controversial issues we find in Scripture. We're not going to try to solve this controversy, but we're going to point out a couple of things which might be helpful as we seek to study these things, and we need to make sure that we read the last note of our uh, personal study before we close this lesson, because Sister White writes that there are some very important things for us to consider in the book of Daniel. But now, why did we mention France in this lesson? Because France became, as Sister Kroll said, atheistic. Now, where do we find that parallel in uh, the king of the north and the king of the south? In Jeremiah, it's very clear that the king of the north, according to Jeremiah, is Babylon. 
Now, they didn't come directly uh, from Babylon, which would be the east. They had to come around the great desert and come in from the north. It's interesting, David says, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. That table, that showbread, when David went into the tabernacle and Jesus justified him taking the showbread from that table, was on the north side of the tabernacle. So that was kind of symbolic for us, that God, even in the time of great trouble, that prepares a table for me in the presence of mine enemies, is on the north side of the tabernacle where this false bread comes from, this false religion comes from. So we're going to look at the king of the north and the king of the south, literally and symbolically, and we are not sure exactly how, we're going, uh, how these things will play out. We'll know in the end. The important thing is not how they shall play out, but are we going to be ready for these events when they come? So the king of the north and the king of the south starts in 1140, Daniel 1140 through 43, uh, which makes reference to the time of the end. And as Sister Crowell has correctly pointed out, the time of the end began in 1798. After a long interval, the king of the south and the king of the north again appear on the stage of action. That's an interesting statement again appear on the stage of action. Now may I point out at this point, which is something that is not common knowledge, but we have pointed out in our Bible studies for many years that the healing of the deadly wound was 1929's Lateran Treaty. I'd like to point out that Lateran Treaty allowed the Vatican to exist as a state so long as they would accept Italian law. But in December of 2008, I believe it was the 27th uh, or somewhere around the 27th to the 30th, the Vatican made a statement that they were no longer going to be subject to Italian law. So what did the Vatican do in 2008? It declared itself independent of any other law except itself. So we can say in 1929 that the, the seat was returned. In um, 18, uh, 1981 to 1984, the United States recognized the papacy as an independent state. So in 1984, well, 1981, they passed the law that recognized the Vatican. In 1984, they sent their first ambassador. So it was the seat of power was returned in uh, 1984. And in 2008, the great authority was returned. So the dead of whom has actually been healed completely. The power, the seat, and the great authority mm -hmm. as of recent times. Now, this text says that shall appear again on the stage of action at the end of time. So what does that tell us? Brothers and sisters, it could be. And it doesn't matter whether it is or not. We need to be ready. What will the king of the north do at the, time of the, at the end of time in the battle? What uh, is still in the future? What important sign is for is this for the believers? Now, this has to do with a lot of history, but I think we can make it rather short. So, Corolla, can you help us with this text, with this, with this point? Well, um, according to the text in Daniel, I understand that there is going to be an issue over the holy mountain, mm -hmm. which is uh, Jerusalem. In a literal sense. Right? We, have to see, we, we have to understand that we can interpret this perhaps in both a literal and symbolic sense. And there's, this is the controversy. So what does, what, when we talk about the sign, what was the sign to the Christians in the early times? It was basically when they would see the Roman armies right. approach, they should leave the city. Right, so now we're, we're looking now at the end of time, taking a parallel from that, and how can we apply this? to our day. Yeah, it's mentioned here in the verse number 44 that the king of the north, um, let me read it here in the English, uh, shall, uh, just in my, <coughs> I'm looking here, yeah, but sing, uh, tidings out mm -hmm. of the east and out of the north shall travel him, therefore he shall go forth with great fury to destroy and utterly to make away many. And he shall plant the tabernacle in his place between the seas in the glorious holy mountain. He, yet he shall come to his end and none shall help him. Here we mention, as Carola just mentioned, that uh, the city of Jerusalem will be the center. And that will be there, this king of the north, with the full fury 
to again make a persecution and destruction. This is a picture that we are having mm -hmm. in front of us. When we see that this persecution and destruction will be also something that we need to expect as children of the Lord. And But it's also mentioned in the verse number 12, 1, what sign uh, is this for the believers? Is mentioned there. In 12, 1, we see that uh, Michael stand up, the great prince stand with stand for the children of the people, of his people. And he's here we see that in this fight, again, will be a terrible fight. Mm -hmm. Jesus himself will stand for his people to deliver his people. Okay. So we see that these events point to the time of the end. And the sign that we understand uh, is going to be prominent is that, again, uh, at the time of the end, there will be a joining together of the political and the religious to enforce papal law. Mm -hmm. Not God's law, but papal law, and that will be seen primarily in the passing of a Sunday legislation. So when we shall see that sign, we know that the time is in, that the end is very near. There are other things we could mention, like great peace and safety are being, being uh, uh, said at that time, and then sudden destruction shall come. But when it all comes down to the end, he that is just shall be remain just. He that is unjust will remain unjust. That's question six. Mm -hmm. We'd like to go uh, a little bit uh, it more into this ideas of how this is going to happen, but the important thing for the students of Bible here to understand is there are different ways of approaching this hermeneutically, and one of them would be to look at it literally, and then you would look at Turkey and Egypt and all those things, but we believe and understand that this is not just a literal battle, it's a spiritual battle. Therefore, these things are symbolic. If we're going to say that um, the papacy is going to have to establish itself in Jerusalem and some other things like that, literally, we may not understand the meaning uh, and find ourselves ready for the time of the end. So when Christ leaves the sanctuary, it says darkness covers inhabitants of the earth. It, it's going to be a fearful time. But we have the promise of God that he will uh, be there uh, when we need him. So as we look at the time in which we live, the point that we're making, or the lesson is making, is be ready. We have a time that we're going to have to be able to stand. And it says in our last question, earnest study and prayer for understanding what is to happen to the vision, what assurance was given to the faithful servant of God. What does it say in Daniel chapter 12, verse 4, particularly? Yes, i just let you comment, maybe answer this, but comment a little still from question number 6. There was mentioned that uh, in that time, in that time, will be uh, also the time of travel, uh, will be also a resurrection, and this is mentioned into this partial resurrection from Daniel chapter mm -hmm. 12, that will go through these <coughs> hardest difficulties on us. I already mentioned too, there is no, who is unjust, remain unjust, that means there will be not any more time of grace, right. where the people of God in this great day of trouble will need to depend only through the dependence of the grace of the Lord. When it's very important that we may understand that we need to be ready before this time. Right, that's what question because seven is going to. there is to. no more, no more possibilities. When we talk that. about the special resurrection, we talk about the time of, of closing of probation, those are historical events uh, which, when it's, it happens, it's over. So mm -hmm. concentrating on those things is not going to help us much. To know they're coming as a warning is important. Yeah. But I'd like to read, as we close our lesson, two very important things. And which are admonitions for us. And Sister Crow, would you read the first part of the note to question seven? And then we're going to talk about the 20, uh, 12, uh, 29, I mean the 1290 and the 1335, just briefly as we close our lesson. Would you read the first part of that note? Of question seven. Seven, yes. The note says, as we near the close of this world's history, the prophecies recorded by Daniel demand our special attention as they relate to the very time in which we are yes, living. right. Now read the last note in our study, uh, personal study. What does it say there? Something very similar. When the books of Daniel and Revelation are better understood, believers will have an entirely different religious experience. Hallelujah. 
So we need to be studying this more carefully. And we're not trying to, in this lesson, come up with controversial ideas. We're trying to get our students, our members, to look at the book of Daniel humbly and carefully, as well as see the things that are happening in our world today as telling us that these things are going to be repeated. They will give such glimpses of the open gates of heaven that heart and mind will be impressed with the character that all must develop in order to realize the blessedness which is to be the reward of the pure in heart. There's a testimony that says, when we understand the scriptures and all that is in the scriptures as pointing to the restoration of the character of God in man, when we understand that the uplifting of humanity is the central point of all scripture, and we can say that also of Daniel, then we have the key that unlocks the scriptures, and that means particularly of prophecy. So as we go forward in our Christian experience, as we've gone already halfway through this year already of 2011, so quickly it seems, let us consider as we study this very humbly that God is seeking to speak to us of the time in which we live. Just shortly mentioned there uh, in this text of the last question, is mentioned this uh, blessed is he that waited and cometh to the 1,305 and 30 days. And this is interesting <coughs> because it's a prophecy that is in the middle of the 2,300 uh, days mm -hmm. uh, that uh, started in the year 508 with uh, the conversion of uh, uh, Clovis, um, where um, was supported more the papacy where the uh, uh, yeah get the strength the papacy in mm -hmm. his development until and finish in the year 843 where was the moment where was mm -hmm. the study of all right. these prophecies of Daniel and Revelation and why is blessed because we are now in this, in this uh, end in of this the day final time yes and this is uh, we can have this possibilities of studying this message that was revealed. Why I pointed this? Because it's revealed in 1843 or 1844 mm -hmm. or after the Adventist movement came. When, when we understand this prophecy, we can prepare ourselves more to stand against all this uh, confusion that is bringing uh, the papacy on today, not anymore as strong as was in the Middle Age with the persecution hand with the oppression, mm -hmm. but with the confusion the philosophies on a lot of different tactics, we are today facing all this situation. On the call of the Lord at the end of this lesson, uh, and also at the end of the book of Daniel, is that we may prepare ourselves and study this book that one time was sealed, was closed, that we may take time and investigate this book mm -hmm. and prepare. Things are going to happen as we uh, also read uh, in the in Jerusalem as a sign for these last right. days. So we have the physical we, signs there the in physical Jerusalem. Physical signs. Now we have the spiritual yeah. issues. Now. The spiritual also that this coming again of the papacy mm. in the power forcing through the Sunday law and all these events. We need to prepare ourselves because when the time of grace finish, there is no any more time of preparation. So I so may the Lord help us to be I'd ready like for to close moments. the lesson then with a thought, with a couple of thoughts, if I may. When we look at Daniel, we have four lines of prophecy. And those lines of prophecy end with the destruction of the power that stands up against Christ. Now, if you go to the book of Revelation, particularly the last half of Revelation, we have in the first half three lines of prophecy, churches, seals, trumpets. In the last half, we have another series of prophecies, particularly chapter 7 and 18. 17 and 18. I would like to propose that we have a parallel in the book of Daniel with the book of Revelation. If we're going to explain Daniel, we have to explain it in the light of, that comes from the book of Revelation. And in the book of Revelation, we see that there is a power that's going to come to its end, and none shall help him. That same power we see destroyed in Revelation 18. So there is a parallel between Daniel and, Re and Revelation that we must not destroy. That must be established. So, as we look now at the book of Daniel and at the book of Revelation and the Bible in general, let's remember the, the, the 
the statement that said that said in our notes to study all should see the necessity of understanding the truth for themselves individually we must understand the doctrines that have been studied out carefully and prayerfully it has been revealed to me that there is among our people a great lack of knowledge in regard to the rise and progress of the third angel's message there's a great need to search the book of Daniel and the book of Revelation and learn the text thoroughly that we may know what is written. Amen. So may the Lord help us as we've had a glimpse into the book of Daniel in our studies. We might realize that in these, in the study of these books, and if you'd like to read further, read Testimonies uh, to Ministers, pages 111, 117, and there is also instruction about what we should be doing as far as the book of Re Revelation and Daniel is concerned. May the Lord help us. Again, we come to the point that we have a physical history in Israel, but now we have a spiritual and symbolic application of that to spiritual Israel in the last days. That's why the fall of Jerusalem is, and the situation in France is symbolic for us and lessons for us who meet the challenges of the time of the end. May God help us that we may be able to stand in that day with the full armor of God on is my prayer. May God help us. Amen. Amen.